Hello everybody and welcome to episode 21 of my advanced tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. Today's main topic will be noble solutions. So what I mean with that is I want to take care of excess noblemen and I want to show you what you can do uh, whenever you have that situation on your hand as well. You know, it is just like that in Dwarf Fortress sometimes you have dwarves that actually nobody wants to have. Therefore, we're going to pick up a solution for that. Here in the last episode, we successfully inherited two barony titles that we totally didn't want to have, and therefore we have a really, really good opportunity to showcase that. So the very first thing though that I wanna do is I want to issue some woodcutting orders because our stockpiles of wood have ran practically dry. We have successfully entrapped a web-spitting monstrosity in our little uh, premises here. We successfully have brought up some elk birds that are permanently producing uh, new webs if we want to. So these things, be, be they as, it, as they might be, we're going to go now for one very simple dastardly and ingenious solution for the nobleman problem, you know? The thing is, if you want to get rid of a nobleman, you always have to take uh, into account the fact that the noble person that we're talking about is actually important for the people. Oh, we have a, uh, we have a artifact in the making. What I'm trying to say is uh, if you are just killing them off directly, your folks will grow unhappy because of that, you know? It's just not right to do this. And therefore, we need to do this more creatively. So, two methods can be applied when you want to get rid of a uh, dwarf. Method one is that you just use the infamous Atom Smasher, and that's what we're going to do here in the first scenario. So, we have this thing here, and now we just add in a no burrow here. It's quite, it's really dastardly. And now we assign the Baron in question. So let's see, we have, uh, we must find Azum Kirlalor and Tobol. These names, you know. So let's see. Hardest part is always to find the person in question, but uh, luckily they have the uh, title there standing out here. Baron of Glove released. So we're going to utilize this here. So the Baron of Glove released is now meant to be in that burrow. And it might now take a while for that guy to get there mostly because of the fact that if they had something to do beforehand they're uh, they're not going to get there so we are going to check out where that person is at if i if i get the ability to dwarf diagnostician necromancer oh my god we have yet another necromancer in our midst all right i got to take care of that dude so it seems like my civilization is quite fond of necromancy. Sometimes it just happens, you know. But until then, let's see what our friend Tobol is doing. So yeah, he, he froze in place. The moment I assigned that uh, burrow to him, he froze in place. Sometimes that happens and it's uh, quite weird indeed. I mean, this is also a ways and means to get rid of your uh, of the dwarf in question. You can just easily um, you can just easily um, let them stand somewhere or have them a uh, delightfully uh, catastrophical conflict with a uh, with a forgotten beast. That's totally uh, fine. It's just important that ideally you want to kill off the nobleman in question in a in a way that he or she is never to be seen and never to be found. So let's check out our clothiers workshop. Oh, that's looking out quite nicely. We have still that thing here for the new doctor's hall. So I 
did that a little bit in between the episodes, so we don't lose too much time to that. We have yet another guild hall that has been requested this time for the doctors, because obviously we have that many here in the fortress. I bet that the new necromancer that has arrived in town is uh, one of the new one of the new migrants that have recently hit town. So we have now we have now to look for one odd colored dwarf. Here we go, Zuntir. I'm going to assign Zuntir to the same borough that I assigned the other necromancer to, because this way they can chill out and share their secrets of life and death with one another. So we're going to build this like that, and uh, did I already mention that I love DF hack? If not, you should know that I love DF hack. This is amazing. This makes things so much easier. Flooring this room would have been so much of a pain to deal with beforehand. So let's see how the pit's looking like. So technically, sooner or later, our Baron should arrive there. But as you see there, we have it all. But uh, for some odd reason, Tobul is just uh, frozen in place again. So fret not, I have a solution for you. So it's just like that. Sometimes dwarves can't be convinced to go somewhere. But one thing that convinces every uh, every dwarf to uh, to get somewhere is a lever. Here we cannot build a lever here because there's already a building present. You see that bridge. But uh, we can do this like that. And uh, to make sure that our dastardly plan will work out for real, we're going to go here for that. So you might notice it ain't that easy to kill off your noble person just like that. I think this is intentional game design, by the way. The other method that um, we totally can apply here is simply by utilizing a aquiferous level like that. So, is that assigned to anybody? This is the manager's office, alright. So, uh, yeah, the manager's office will move to this place. Meanwhile, I'm trying to take care of our food problem, because the food stockpiles are plummeting downwards and downwards. I do notice that, don't you worry. But, uh, you know, we got other uh, things in mind here. So, now we're going to go for something like that. We're going to make it like that. We also need a hatch. Go. And we need another lever. So, let's see how the pit situation has evolved. There we go. So our good friend Tobu will finally found his place there without us doing anything. Sometimes it is like that, sometimes it's not. What you could have done to convince Tobu to do his thing is to assign that lever specifically to Tobu and then lock the door behind him after he has pulled the lever. Works, works a charm. So here we're now going to use the Atom Smasher to some really, really dastardly purpose. So, our friend Tobul was called down here to inspect a new rock salt lever. He didn't really find the rock salt lever to his liking, but nevertheless, Tobul is no more. The wonderful thing about atom smashing is they are completely deleted from existence. There is no... Um, no negative thought about that, no nothing. They they will just completely forget about the very existence of that person, basically. Um, they, they will miss that person, they will be like, oh man, I want to talk to Tobul again. But uh, they, they won't be like, okay, we, uh, we saw him die and we're freaking out. And speaking about freaking out, we have yet another monstrosity in our caverns. So, you know what that means? We're going to lock ourselves in yet again, and I'm going to prepare the uh, monster trap one more time. Luckily, we have our cave spitter locked up inside this uh, uh, cave spitter, web spitter locked up inside here. That means we can open up 
the rest of the machinery here and lure the monster back in there, but probably not now. We are still busy with other things. So, Necromancer number two has now found company with Necromancer number one. Brilliant. I like this. The only thing that I really want to check out, I want to make sure that this guy is really, really came from, from the last migrant wave. Because if not, I would have I need to ask myself, where did he learn the necromancy from? You know, if some of your people certain, suddenly turn into necromancers and you don't know why, be wary. <laughs> you know, that's something you should really, really take care of. So, our food situation is still not quite under control. We got a couple of elk birds here in the, in the rooms. So, there are several ways how we could deal now with that. I will also bring up one other method that I personally like in times like these. You know, we could now keep pitting those elk birds inside the... Uh, Inside the pit, uh, pitting them inside the pit, yeah. Great English icon. Um, we could toss them into the pit, so that's what I'm trying to say. But instead, we can also use them as a free meat source, you know. So let's uh, carve out a little bit more of extra space up here, and then let's prepare the other noble solution here. So the other method that you can apply, I need to check that, is that you, ah, oh, it's just a cave croc fight, is that you create a room like I do here, you know? It's, it's clear that this room will be absolutely deadly at some point, of course. So that's actually the plan. We're now creating a new one, one grid office here for the manager because, enough, that's a study, you know? And uh, when the time's right, we're going to create this as a bedroom and this way you can also just flood the the noble person in question the benefit with that method is a quite simple one if you keep the door shut the person will just go missing at some point they will never see the body of the person and therefore it's also a nice way of getting rid of unwanted barons i'm going to try and utilize this here as well so you can afterwards decide for yourself which methods you like. Whatever method you want to choose for disposing of unwanted noblemen, it's really really important that you make sure that nobody will ever see the evidence of your doing. That's by the way the reason why the uh, Atom Smasher is by far the most uh, popular and uh, effective version to do of doing this because you know there is um, there is no real downside to it, you know. It's just uh, it's just that lame that it is uh, supposedly quite boring. That's one thing that I can't say. So we're going to do one other thing here. We're going to set up some butchers' shops and we're going to slaughter some livestock here. Our dude here begun a construction. All right, there's quite a lot of stuff involved. And here I'm now planting out more quarry bushes. This should, in the long run, resolve my food issues. Because I'm quite positive that the only problem currently is that we have not enough quarry bush production. And here you see the dude is uh, missing since a week. How could that possibly happen? We don't know. Jokes aside, this is uh, the only thing that'll happen out of this, you know? They're going to wonder where is the dude, but they're not going to be like, uh, oh no, a baron died! And their relatives, they won't freak out either. And this is uh, therefore a really, really cool solution to that problem. It's just like uh, flooding that room here. So we're going to put up a new bedroom exclusively for um, let's see, Azum, that's the one that we're looking for, right? Yeah, she's gonna hate her new bedroom, but that's all part of the plan. Ah. Okay, so let's move on, shall we? Alright, we got yet another um, 
monster inside our caves. That's pretty annoying all in all. And therefore, we gotta get rid of it. I, I'm personally quite positive that all military would be actually strong enough of taking care of them by themselves. But in all honesty, I'm, I'm, I'm not that eager. So for this solution, by the way, all we need to do now is to wait until all Baroness goes goes for a sleep. You can also use the same method without the water. Just lock them inside their bedroom and never open it again. It's the other way that you can go for if you want to get really rid of your uh, noble people. It's not that hard to get rid of them, in all honesty. But um, the methods that I showed here give you the idea. As long as you can sell it somehow as an accident, as long as it has been some outside force, it's never going to be taken as a crime, but what can happen is that people will freak out because it was probably a relative of them and uh, therefore they will be sad, you know. You killed uncle uh, or you killed uh, aunt uh, Etum or Izum or however she was called. So you, you get the idea. That's the only problem that can arise out of these things. A pigtail shoe, claimed as a family heirloom, Let's uh, check out Labored Strife. So, yeah. They sometimes create these super weird artifacts for their family, and you're just uh, and you're just starting to wonder why. Why on earth are you doing that? So we're now going to go for the burrow method. You know. I personally love this. This is the easiest way of luring a dwarf where you want to have him. So let's just find that person. I really look forward to the day when I finally can have a search bar in this menu here because this is uh, really, really a a super painful way of uh, of finding what you're looking for by now i'm mostly looking for the uh, titles because i personally find it much easier to find people according to their title than anything else but it's still not easy it's still not easy especially when you're uh, now looking for a bad person because you're luring that person to her death so Here we go. So, she's currently sleeping in that room. Why are you... So, that's an interesting one. I had no clue that a dwarf can have two bedrooms assigned to him or her. So, we gotta make sure that this uh, bedroom ain't assigned to her anymore. Interesting. Today I learned. I really didn't know that. I actually thought that this was not possible. Anyways, so we got yet another nasty, nasty little monster on the on the road. So we're going to. Are we going to do this like that? Yeah, we can do this. So we're opening up this uh, room here, and we're going to restock the the trap here. Just. Uh, like we did it the first time. It's just super important that you take good care of the fact that there should be no um, breach into the into the fortress whatsoever. So now we're going to put up some extra butcher's workshop and also we're going to put up some extra stockpile for meat. This way we can make sure that we're going to have the most important and useful items directly uh, processed. All right, so let the slaughtering begin. So sadly, you cannot uh, do that as a mass um, mass order, but uh, you know, we're just going to put up a few of these. And then call some of the rookies. Well, I don't really have any rookies, but you get the idea. So.
So let's assign them to all three of these. And due to the fact that there are butchers' workshops left and right to that, they are going to be um, processed. Th these uh, bodies should be processed quite quickly. Here we go. Choppity chop chop. There we go. And now these will get uh, hopefully processed. You can also uh, set that as a manual task. This way you can force it to get done as fast as possible. So I like to have rooms like these, just simply to have a, a option to, to process food in times of need quite fast, you know. There we go. So this way we gain meat much faster than uh, if we would be just waiting for or if quarry bushes to grow. Alternatively, of course, we could also slaughter some of the uh, handful of uh, yak cows that we got upstairs. It's not as if we don't have food available, you know. It's just like you have to process it from time to time. Okay, so the bridge has been lowered. We got to find where the chain's at. So we could also... Um, Let's see, since we have this like that, yeah. We can also now utilize these uh, looms here. Let me show you. So you can now tell them to collect webs. Could also bring up some extra looms here. Of course, you could bring that uh, a lot more organized and tidy. But uh, the, the cool part now is that we can just collect what the monster has uh, spit out so far while we're while we're putting up new critters on the chain. And since this area down here is the only accessible area for us for the web collection, there is no risk involved that they accidentally would delve into areas where I don't want them to go. So yeah, I, I really like this. I, I really like this method of uh, web generation. I mean, it's... Not something you can pull off every time. You don't get uh, that lucky every time that you get such an uh, easy access to a web spitter like I do here. But at the same time, I personally think it's awesome. You know, I really, really think it's awesome. So these looms down here, well, all right, whatever. We're going to tell this one here to collect webs as well. And we're going to keep these up and running until there's no more um, web down here to be found. And then we're going to restock the trap. That's what I'm going to do. This way we got, uh, we, we utilize it fully, you know. Let's check back with the uh, doctor's guild hall. It's not there yet, so we're going to put up some statues. Or that place, we still got some bauxite. Oh, we have a statue of Tobul. That gives me a weird feeling. Is it the same toolbowl? I, I, I bet it is the same toolbowl. So, the lady here is standing in the wrong spot. That's because I draw I drew the burrow wrongly. So we need to delete that little uh, spot here. Because if she's standing on the door, it won't work, you know. So let's retry that. She's almost been there already. We basically just need to wait until she sleeps, and then the trap will spring to life. Quite dastardly. So I, I feel like the Baroness is is uh, is aware of my plans. Like I said, you could have just uh, gone for a, a simpler solution there. What you can always uh, do, of course. I haven't covered it yet, and I will cover it in a later episode still, but you can take the barons and instate them when you're raiding a, uh, another option here. You can conquer areas, and um, if you conquer an area, you always leave a certain person in place there to, uh, to, to manage that place. And quite easily said, you can take the Baron that you don't want to have, put him into the uh, into charge of that squad, and let him conquer a small 10 goblin uh, pit or something like that. And this way you got yourself an easy way to 
get rid of the Baron without getting rid of the Baron, if you get what I mean. And uh, that's personally, for me, one of my favorite ways of doing it. So here I'm now amping up the uh, amount of looms, because, you know, why not use what we have already collected here? And let's check back. Ah, here she is. So, locking the door, flicking the switch, and never look back again. That's just what you, uh, how you can get rid of uh, your barons there as well. It is, of course, up to you, you know. And when you do something like that, it's extremely important that you never, ever um, open that door again. Because the moment they will find the body of the person in question, they will get all the backlash that is involved with... Uh, with the death of a certain person, you know? Therefore, it's really important that you keep that in mind. And there my game died on me. Give me a sec. Well, I must say, that's very, very sad. I've just lost all the progress that we've made during the entire episode, so I'm calling it a day at this point. We've seen how we can deal with barons and the like, and I'm going to restore the rest of the episode just like I had it before, like uh, the new web collection area and all these things. And uh, in the next episode, we're going to go over other things that we really, really need to do, and that's work, starting to work with magma, and probably also starting to work with the map conquering screen, because in all honesty, we're reaching towards the end of the series. There's only a few more things before we can go for adamantine mining. So, thanks for hanging around. I'm sorry about the abrupt ending of this episode. There's a couple of things that I need to fix now, and I hope you guys will leave me a nice comment down below. I love to hear back from you. Leave me a thumbs up on the episode if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing. I'd be delighted if you did so. That being said, have a wonderful day, and see you soon.